Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we are in the Rock Full of Brains 3 Asteroids. We've just seen the overview. Here are those three asteroids. We have some more we can take over, but we are pushing back the bounds of knowledge as we speak right now. If we come over and have a look at this uh, encased telescope over here, this is the way that we push back the fog of war on the star map and start getting some more information going. Last time we managed to get that up and running. I'm not sure where Plank is because Plank is the guy. Here he is coming along to actually go ahead and start that uh, that exploration process. But at the very end of last episode, I realized that we had a little bit of a problem beginning to boil over, shall we say. If I come over to play Axelin and do the magical button press, we can see that we've got a little bit of an issue over here. Not only do we have lava building up, this, this could become an issue. It actually is it's a bit of a, a good thing. But we have crude oil down in where we should only have petroleum, and there's also gases in there. That is the number one thing we did not want, was gases in this little area here. So we're going to have to uh, just try and pump those out, sweep up the items that are making the gas. Not only is there a little bit of meat here, which is ready to decompose at any moment, but we actually have some polluted dirt, and that is where the gas has actually come from, so I'd like to get that as well. Obviously, to be able to do that, we're going to have to bust our way in here. This is always a scary moment. I'm actually going to do it from both sides, and then hopefully we get an even gas distribution whilst doing that. I think I would also like to try and remove the crude oil from here. I think the way that I'm going to do it, though, is by this pump. You can see that it is currently picking up a bunch of petroleum. Well, at any moment, it could start picking up the crude oil on the other side. So I think we're going to have to try and put some sort of filtration system in place. Uh, if we come to the plumbing liquid filter. Now, we've got to make sure that we go from green to white. Many, many times in the past, I have messed that up. Uh, and then if we just try and break all of those. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, is we're going to say, hey, any gases, oh, sorry, any liquids that are, hmm, what am I going to make this out of? I kind of don't want it to melt. Let's go with uh, thermally reactive sedimentary rock. We're just going to move the gases up and uh, the, the liquids up. Can you tell I've been working with gases a lot recently? Uh, and we are going to let them drop on the floor. This is a little bit bad because it can mean we're going to get some quite hot materials dropping on the floor. And I would like cool materials to flow up here. So we're probably going to have to turn the... Uh, the oil wells back on as well. I just paused the game when I actually meant to uh, ask people to come along and do these at the height. Oh, some, someone's already doing it. Curie, what wonderful work. This does, however, mean that the gases, as you can see, are flowing out of here, uh, struggling to make it past the two gas pumps. That's actually pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. We've got 33, 34. Uh, I'm hoping, actually, what's happening is we are losing a whole bunch of the gas to the vacuum at these front edges. It's splitting down into smaller gaps, uh, smaller packets than the game can support. That That's my hope, anyway. Man, we've got, we've got a lot to go through here, though. So, from the petroleum boiler on Pyaxlin to this little corridor that we've got going on Blagolia. This, of course, was the place we were at last time, making uh, an aluminium volcano and a cobalt volcano. Kind of self-cooling. Let's just see and make sure... No, we haven't got these pipes up and running correctly yet. I just was trying to make a little bit more thermal mass, if you will, on the side here. Something that can keep the temperature nice and low when the cobalt volcano spews its uh, 2,000... 200 degree materials on the floor. Hopefully all of this will absorb the, the, the heat a little bit better. Uh, and of course, the little bit of water that is on the floor, really saving the day with the aluminium volcano. But what I actually want to do here, not just describe everything that we're doing, is I want to come and dig all the way up along like so. I think someone is uh, available on the, the on the base to be able to dig this, maybe Goddard or someone like that. But then I'm also thinking maybe we want to start thinking about having a floor that comes along at this level, or maybe one that's a little bit lower. Whatever the case is, I think this door is in the wrong place and we should think about moving that. And let's uh, continue our little swing around all of the uh, all of the asteroids here back over to reverse. And let's just make sure things are, are ticking over well. We've got the lava eating device. It seems to be working well. Eating a whole a lot of lava. Producing us igneous rock. Uh, goes via the magic. I've lost it. Of this rail over here. Drops it on the floor to cool down and then gets fed to our stone hatches. Currently starving because they're waiting for for the next input of food. Yeah, this, this place looks great. Let's have a look at the blueprints that we can have. Oh, I'll take some steel for free, thank you. 
Steel, of course, being produced down uh, here. Is it this one? Iron to steel are uh, being uh, held up by the amount of amount of lime we don't have yet. Just to be sure, I'm going to produce another. Oh yeah, hey, let's do 50. Why not? We're not we're not restricted by coal here. Uh, so back to Pyax, and another thing that we need to do to try and make sure that this can uh, be ticking over, which is going to be pushing the temperature up a little bit at a time. We're going to try and turn as much of this to petroleum as we can. I've got a feeling because of the weird geometry of this shape, we're probably going to have to try and turn all of this into petroleum so that when the liquid vent here can... Why did that just pop up? <laughs> but anyway, whilst the liquid vent can output down below, it would then warm up from down here. Maybe it would be nice if we had a warm plate here. Look at it flow. Look at it flow. I think that's okay, though. I think we can live with that. We can't live with the fact that these aren't being finished. Who, who's, who's on this? Whose job is it? Let's have a look. It's Curie's, and she's doing it right now as we speak. Tunnel is being dug quite well. That's nice. Back to Pyaxlin. Uh, things are overflowing. That's nice. We've uh, leveled out here again. Let's turn that up a little bit more. We've got 1400 degrees to play with over on this side. Uh, that, that's it's a bit weird the way it, it uh, goes ahead and boils here. Having the empty block really, I don't know. I feel like it is causing us troubles. I'm not sure if it actually is, but I don't like it. Let's uh, let's go another degree up as well as we can. Oh, even more. Uh, we we just want to keep the temperature flowing for the moment to be honest okay now that this is built we're going to set it to accept crude and oh, of course going to build some power uh, power systems to it turns out i would forgotten that bit in an effort to get more pumps in and run them a little bit faster because I feel like we're going to have some trouble soon. Even though we're down to micrograms, I see these oil wells are already starting to get half full. And I'd like to run the oil wells to be able to cool down all the produce that's coming out of here. So we're really going to need to uh, be able to filter all of this out pretty quick. We don't have any steel at the moment. That is an issue that I hadn't anticipated encountering but I feel like we could probably get away of 130 that means we could probably do gold amalgam that's only a probably though where's the coolest areas of this area let, let, let's just do it let, let's see what happens we, we need extra pumping to happen that is a must Okay, we've unfortunately lost some of this uh, heat to the rock face. That's okay, that, that should be fine. I'm not sure what's going to happen when the condensed matter moves its way up into the steel over there. I've got a feeling it's going to be okay. Current temperature 380 is pretty warm. Uh, that's above the... No, it's not above the three... 399 we need to turn into petroleum. So I think we can keep going. Of course... We can't just turn this one straight up to 400 degrees because these window tiles, as you can see, are significantly hotter. Uh, so we need to make sure that this is the temperature balance, the, the temperature flow that is balanced to make sure that we don't make a whole bunch of sour gas because we've already got enough gas problems. We don't, we don't need more. So we're going to very carefully and with great forethought just creep this temperature up. I'm a little worried about the way the petroleum isn't going up the top here i was kind of hoping it would and we're starting to get quite the pressure there 477 kilograms i suppose it's 800 above it so that that kind of makes sense but that's that's still mm, significantly more than some of the others we've got here so far with these non-steel gas pumps there does not appear to be enough like thermal mass around we're down to like four micrograms here that uh it doesn't seem to be transferring its temperature across this is good because this is only made out of copper ore it, it's likely to melt if things get too bad there's like 90 degree heat around its thermal overheat is 75 it doesn't it won't melt until we get up to a thousand degrees but uh it will stop working it will just break and uh i don't i don't want it to just do that Okay, so the lava has just cooled down below 1100 degrees. This is definitely causing us a little bit of troubles, not least of which I think is the fact that if I click on this mesh tile, you can see that it's just a mesh tile there, right? No, if I click on it again, suddenly there's some igneous rock back there cooling down in the background. I'm wondering what's going to happen when more lava falls on top of it. I hope there's enough heat in the lava to melt this rather than it cooling down everything around it. Yeah, that, that's going to be uh, interesting 
hoping to see what's going on. So we're basically now just working from the heat that is left in these window tiles here. It's actually a significant amount, 700 degrees. Uh, and we're going to try and just bring this up to, I don't know, 400 degrees or so. So we can start getting all of this. I feel, I feel like what I actually wanted was this window tile to come all the way up and maybe just kind of end here and, and have this drop maybe we could have done just a smaller smaller little heat chamber here and pulled the heat out of that instead I uh, I didn't fully understand this design as I was working on it I was just pulling together strands from everything I'd seen online now that I've actually built and worked with it I understand the process a lot better and yeah you don't you don't need this long drop here it would have been just fine to have this all the way up here would have been nice to figure out another way of storing all the lava, but uh, yeah. In other news, we have got down to micrograms everywhere. Yes, indeed. There we go. 2,000 over this side, 3,000. Oh, 15 milligrams up there. Why are you not being pumped out at the same rate? Hmm. Okay, we have just about reached equilibrium temperature. We've got 400 on one side, 380 on the other. I could push it just a little bit further, but I worry about what's going to happen when we get lava or magma, I suppose in this case, uh, on this side again. Because, of course, a higher temperature spreads faster than a, a higher temperature difference, sorry, spreads faster than a lower temperature difference or a closer one. Uh, so when, when there's like 1,200 degrees on this side, 1,400 in fact, uh, is it going to spread over? to this tile much faster superheating it I, I i am indeed worried about that let's break this up to 399 for the moment uh and then why was it oh it is it's green okay well that's that's the the highest we can actually get this temperature i thought maybe we could just get a few more degrees out of it but this indeed has dropped below 399 so i'm gonna put it back to let's the 380 seemed to be pretty good uh and we we've, we've got to wait five cycles what are we going to do whilst we wait five cycles? Well, I've been going around and trying to figure out a better power system for this. I definitely want to get the uh, oil wells and these pumps onto different loops. I'm going to call them uh, different circuits. Different circuits is the actual word uh, than the these big numbers of pumps that we've got. And we can actually do that right now. I can cut a line here and we can cut a line. Let, let me just see where else. I think that might even just be the one that I'm after because then we can go ahead and attach this one to here. Trace this one back. Oh, it's not quite been built. Let's, uh, let's get that done very, very quickly. All these might die. If they don't die, that means I need to also cut, cut it right here. Okay. That's that's the other place I need to cut, but we can we can get on that. Well, I was hoping that we would be much closer to pumping all of the gases out here, but the uh, minor volcano is going to erupt in less than a cycle. We've got down to four micrograms here. I had to sweep out a whole bunch of crude oil from this point here because the gases, they only had the one tile to escape out and round. So uh, it was starting to build up down here. It, we, we still had like 20 odd milligrams, not micrograms. Uh, and we, we kind of need to stop you from doing this now. Thank you very much, Maxwell. Uh, all of the crude oil is being taken out to this little point here where I've also made an extra petroleum generator because we were running out of power overnight so I pulled down one of the coal generators moved this auto sweeper over and put that extra one up I've also put this little system in place here let's press f7 uh, ah I knew this would happen unfortunately I'm only able to detect one type of gas but let's describe what's going on here uh, so the pipe comes along we have a double double jump this this first one takes the priority jumps over and passes gas on and then when eventually this backs up, uh, this back, this pump here will be told that it can... Well, actually, this, this pumps all the way back and then it flows past, leaving us with a little detection point so we can find out what is going on, or rather that this has some gas in there. Uh, I wonder if there's a better, better thing. Is there a, like a... A density germ or thermo N neither of these are what I want unfortunately is that like I want like a mass sensor ideally but as we can't actually do any of those I've gone for the element sensor uh, we were just pumping regular polluted oxygen out of there but obviously we've got other pumps that also do some work down here and uh, have decided to dump other uh, pipe other gases in there inside the the bridge though or at least inside the pipe we've got some carbon dioxide so let's search for carbon dioxide let that run like this it should now allow that to flow through right oh wait 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 
Small issue there, I hadn't split the pipe. Okay, we've now split the pipe. And that should just then continue flowing up until the point that it turns off. We've got no carbon dioxide left in there. Uh, where again, it's going to be picking up a different gas. Now this time we are back to polluted oxygen. I'm just, I'm just going to go back to the polluted oxygen. It's the uh, the best sort of standby for the moment. Oh, the, the magma has not flown yet. We're at 7 cycles, 0.7 cycles. We, we, we're getting close though. We're getting close. Uh, you might also note, whilst we are uh, turning a lot of this into petroleum, the, the, the level of the crude oil has dropped down. That's actually good. It means we're turning most of it into petroleum. Uh, and at some point, we're going to have to turn the flow of these oil wells back on so we can have some cooler... Uh, cooler crude oil to pump up through the system to counteract the heat that's going to be back flowing back. That's kind of how this thing works. You have cold stuff pumping one way, hot stuff pumping the other, to two switch temperatures in the middle, and you get some petroleum that's not 400 degrees out. Obviously, it kind of broke. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what happened. We weren't watching at the time, but uh, somehow this overfilled and the hot temperature got down here. How have we got such high pressures down here at 12 milligrams? It must have fallen out of this area here. Yeah, look, 22 milligrams. When we mopped this area, there must have been a uh, pressure built up. You can almost see that there'll be, if two two tiles were filled here, yeah, this would have been a, that's, that's unfortunate, a little airlock, sorry. That's unfortunate, that's given us a lot of gas to deal with. And this is, is, is 0.2 cycles away, okay. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not really here right now for the heat. I'm here to see what happens to this bit of igneous rock. I've got a feeling its melting temperature is going to have to go up and beyond uh, what it currently is at, you know, uh, up and beyond the 1400 degrees that that is there. Uh, but two cycles to wait. It take, takes a while. Let's, let's speed up the game. Okay, we are just about to turn into nighttime, and let's not get our hopes up too much because we've sat here and watched this erupt in so many seconds before, and then, yeah, it's over pressure? No, it's, there's no way it's over pressure. So it is now filling out. That's good. I want to see what happens to this igneous rock here as well. Is it going to grow, uh, grow in temperature? It is 14.2, uh, 14.02. Uh, it's, it's got a long way to go before it's actually going to melt, but let's have a look at this igneous rock as well. Is it gaining temperature? It is. It's only points per second, but it's uh it's gonna get there i feel it's gonna get there talking of gonna get there i think one thing i want to do is start moving the igneous rock out of here it's at 1400 de uh, 400 degrees 1400 degrees it'd be a be a melty mess if it was at 1400 degrees it's at 400 degrees but i think we can send that over we're not using igneous rock for anything uh it's not a great building material other than a waste building material i suppose so uh yeah if we if we take it out of here and pop it over to uh, the reverse lid, it can be fed to the hatches. Okay, that that was the eruption. Uh, it's all right. Six tiles worth of magma, I suppose. It's it, kind of a little bit under that as well because, uh, of course, there was two tiles worth here anyway. Uh, I'm having a look at this ladder. It's got up to 1,600 degrees. That's that's nice. I'm hoping that will stay at that temperature. Uh, magma, uh, sorry, obsidian doesn't melt until 2,700. It's why we built the ladders out of them. Uh, and, of course, the steel is rising, but what about the igneous rock? I mean, it's getting there. It's going to take a while while though right maybe as long as it's going to take for us to pump all these gases out of here okay we know it's not going to happen instantly because we're already over 1410 degrees where we needed to be to melt it but very shortly this igneous rock should cross over the threshold i'm guessing it's 1412 something like that at which point it will dump a whole bunch of uh, magma down below i'm wondering whether this igneous rock is going to melt or whether it's going to turn the magma around it into more chill i mean the magma is i mean it's climbing in temperature that's that's interesting. Okay, but what about the igneous rock underneath it? If we if we could melt this igneous rock, I would be very, very happy. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Oh, the temperature went up by 0.1, but man, that's, that's going to take some time. Talking of taking time, the gases are still at hundreds of micrograms. Hundreds. R running out of patience? What? Why would you think I'm running out of patience? I, I always put down as many gas pumps as I can. That's... That's totally my game style, honestly. 
And obviously before I can even get the extra pumps put in place, we have a vacuum spread going on. Oh, it's disappearing further than past the pump I was very close to getting built. That's uh, that's that's pretty typical, right? Uh, but it is backing up quite nicely. Do I want to rip all of this back down afterwards? I probably do, to be fair. In case anything goes wrong, this could all get very hot here. So I just need to go through and uh, rip, rip all this lot out. Okay, yay. <laughs> We've got a surprising amount of pressure just being held back by this one little t wide tile gap. Starvation? Oh, no, I've fallen for this this game before. We're not going to listen to them unless it stays up there for a long time. Uh, we've got like 20 milligrams pushing down. It's only two by the time it gets to the bottom of the one wide tile. Must tell us something about how gases spread down here. The fact that it can go a little bit, little bit, little bit and then eventually runs out. Um, but that that knowledge unfortunately doesn't get us any closer to actually finishing the pump. All that said, it's starting to uh, pull itself back from this spread face as well. The fact that we've only got a two wide tile there, obviously coming into play as well. Probably going to need this gold pump up and running to be able to finish the job though. Going to find out very shortly as the uh, what I'm going to call line of evaporation has managed to get back to these two tiles here. Wondering how it pulls from the rest. Is there just like a, a bunch of a bunch of numbers telling it to flow in one direction or other? I don't know. I don't know. We're starting to get little vacuums inside of the space as well. This is good. Is this gas pump even going to get built? I think so. Well, I mean, obviously the gas pump is built. Is the gas line going to get finished? I should imagine so. They are pretty quick at their jobs, and away they go. Uh, this should be having a massive impact on this. We're down to single figures down below now. This this is just absolutely destroying it at the top here. That's cool. But what what about down here? Is this... Uh, there's one, not two now. One. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, going to take a little while for this to actually finish, unfortunately. Less than a cycle, I do predict. Oh, there we go. We've managed to flush all of that top bit out. Is it just going to go down line by line at this point? Now, starting from the corner, I find that interesting, probably because it's feeding from this side. And boom, we're clear. Okay, great. Now that we have this perfect setup ready to go, I'm just going to clear that out. We're going to start cranking the temperature here uh, again. I'm not sure if I want to do that immediately or if I want to uh, seal up the doors first. I probably want to seal up the doors and may maybe let the let the oil wells run for a little bit so we have a bit of cold liquids down here let's swap that over it is indeed below zero grams right here so if we could get that taken care of and also be talking of being taken care of can we get all of this stuff out that that would be very handy Okay, so with enough uh, crude oil in the tank, I think it's time to start just creeping this temperature back up again. See if we can't get this all turned into petroleum. Have a hot spot here for us to drop the crude oil on top of. I'm a little bit worried, as always, about turning some of this into... Why is Curie stressed? Turning some of this into so sour gas because we just got this all vacuumed out. Let's not, let's not uh, fill it with different and weird gases again, shall we? Of course, the only thing left to do now is to repair this pump, but it is currently too hot. Too, too hot. And I want to cool it down with some nice, fresh, cool petroleum. So that, that's how we're going to try and make that happen. I wish someone would come along and get rid of these crude oil tanks and this petroleum tank, but I don't know where they would, where they would dump it. So, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, when these doors close, these tiles spike up to dangerous temperatures. 600 degrees, 650 degrees. If this uh, petroleum here was to follow suit, which I'm thankfully it doesn't because it takes time for, temp for energy to transfer. But if it was to follow suit, that would very much be up in the realms of sour gas. Anything over... I mean, let's, let's click on it and have a look. Anything over 538 degrees. So let, let's say 500 degrees is our absolute maximum uh, would put us in the danger zone okay what's going on here we are below oh no no below 384 we're actually 385 let's uh let's click it up one more let's let's creep let's creep all the way up there but whilst we sit here and watch the temperature rise in the petroleum, I would like to take this moment right here and thank the people that get my temperature rising. That's right my patreons scrolling up the screen right now you will see a list of names a list of names of the guys and girls that have gone along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation to make sure me and my shenanigans can carry on into the future it really really is the sole reason that i can take 
for this episode three hours out of my life when I really should be doing some revision for my exams in January. So thank you so much, guys. This I love doing this, and I literally can only do it because of you. Thanks. Okay, with the amount of oil that we've got built up here, I'm going to turn the oil wells off for a moment because as you can see, most of them are ready for degassing and oh, I'm not ready for that. I am not ready for this to be filled up with liquid, with uh, gases for now. Uh, I just want to keep pushing this up a little bit, but at the same time, I don't want to go too far. I feel like going too far could cause us some uh, troubles. Trying to bring this up to, I don't know, 410 degrees, just over the top of what will turn it into petroleum, so that we can start turning all the crude oil that gets dumped down on top of it into instant petroleum without flashing it into sour gas. That's that's the big uh, big conundrum right here it's how we do that without filling this area up with sour gas i'm very scared of it because i know how easy it is to produce sour gas uh, i've done it a few times in the past and i don't want to do it again okay so i need to cool down this area before i can even think about getting in there to repair that also i'll just be repairing it and it will break instantly all over again so my idea is to get this up and running for a little bit that we'll then figure out a safe shutdown process when we can then pump all the gases out that are going to be released when this gets up and running full full go again uh and once the gases are out we can get in and repair this liquid pump hopefully because then we'd have cooler gases drop uh, cooler liquids dropping down that's that's my plan that's what i hope will happen uh, 390 degrees down in the corner here. Very hot. Much, much hotter than this liquid pump can deal with. So we need the whole system working before we can even get at, get at it. Why is there pressure damage? What? Well, literally just, just as I turn the temperature up one, we, we've got a pressure warning. Why? I mean, cool. I would like these fixed as soon as possible. Obsidian, two, two sets of obsidian tiles. But, but what? How did this crack? I'm going to try something. Let's go. Is it utilities? Temperature shift plate. Do we have something high temperature here? We still have some obsidian. I'm just going to dump this. Yeah, right here. This very spot here. Hopefully this will help even the temperature out without shocking the system so, so much. Because I really don't want to drop any more liquids anywhere. Oh, we, we got some temperature flowing anyway, even though... Oh, this, this might be bad. Can we bring this down? Let's bring this down to a regular 360 for now. We're going we're gonna to probably turn it back up afterwards. But whilst this is being made, things could go very bad very quickly. We're under 300 degrees on the tile. Uh, sorry, 400 degrees on the tile. So nothing was really going to go wrong there. Okay, so now that we're at 390, let's set this back to 390. Uh, and hopefully... Whoa. I mean, that was fast. I was expecting fast. And we didn't go above 400. I don't know whether that's good or bad. <laughs> I wish there was a quick save in this game. I really do. I mean, going through and going save. I mean, that's, that's a bit much every time. I haven't even done that up until now. Uh, but I'm going to because uh, I'm going to, I'm going to just going to crank this a little bit at a time. So not there. Let's go one nine, uh, three, nine, three see it. I want to turn it back down again now. Uh, see whether that causes us issues. Ooh, off it goes. I'm trying to get this lot turning into petroleum. Doesn't look like it's going to be a thing. We've instantly turned the lava back into rock, but that's okay. That's fine. We can, we can live with that. We've got more rock on top that hopefully is going to keep this mesh tile nice and toasty. We can, we can hope, right? I feel like this is so close to just turning everything into sour gas. My lack of patience is a, uh, a big issue here, I think. Just dropping it closed for like half a second. You can see that temperature shift plate really spike up in temperature. We've got 400 degree crude oil in the corner. We kind of just want that to trickle on over, you know, just trickle on over. 400 degrees just seems like a bad idea to set it to. This spikes back up to uh, 650. More petroleum being made. This is nice. Is it good enough though? No, the temperature's go. It, it bubbles up and down. It bubbles up and down. Dare I leave it at 400? We've just had a day cycle announced, so I can reload if need be. All right, this, this is fine. This is fine. The temperature shift plate goes up. Oh, we got things being turned into petroleum. This, surely, surely this is stopping the crude oil flowing. Hmm. 
Let's try 401. I mean, I did ch click it up to 402 just for half a second there. Is this just going to turn all of it into petroleum? Sure would be nice. Okay, so this is now pure petroleum here with a little bit of a bottleneck. I don't know whether... Yeah, look at... Look, there, there's a temperature edge here. 400 on one side, 399 on the other. Am I just going to be creeping up to try and get this all the way across? I think that's that's my plan now. That is my plan. Let's wait and see whether this will turn over or whether I'm going to have to increase it by one more degree. We've got 407 down on our current temperature. As long as that doesn't spike above 500, we should be good. And we seem to be smooth on our temperature operations at the moment. Though I do agree, we could sure... <laughs> maybe, maybe I could do with being a little braver. Maybe I could do with being a little braver. Okay, 408. Is that is that going to push it on to where we need it to be? I just want to see these bits here being turned into petroleum, and then I'm going to turn on this switch, which will turn the whole system on. There, oh, there we go. We've got petroleum starting to be turned in that, that little column there. Okay, that's nice. That's very nice. Oh, in fact, it's taken the temperature out of the system enough for it to close back up. Let's see whether this is going to be changing. Now, we're at 402. I'm kind of expecting a 403 at some point, surely. Or it could just chill out again. I don't, oh, there, there we go. 403. That's the turning point. Oh, it's 402 point something. Point nine, I think. 402.9. Uh, we're, we're there on the 402. Still gaining temperature at top. I think we're just going to let it sit and try and um, equal out. Out, a uh, what's it, reach equilibrium again that's definitely definitely what we want here we don't want it spiking up and down but we we are on knife edge stuff we're just just trickling along i feel like i might even want to bring this down a degree as the temperature is still spreading across let's try 406 we'll leave it at that for now oh, do it do i because this is the temperature where it's working <laughs> do we do we keep the temperature where it's working we might just keep the temperature where it's working Okay, let's give it one more. I've been sat here watching it for a few seconds, a little while. Let's uh, let's just see if we can give it just a tiny bit more temperature here. And whether things go bad at 500 degrees on the temperature shift plate. Oh man, I, I'm a little bit worried about that. But we've got things turning up there. I'm going to throw the switch. I'm going to throw the switch. It's time. Uh, probably should have done so a little while ago, actually. But this is down to less than four, uh, 400 degrees. 409. Okay, that's good. So what's going to happen here is as this crude oil is added to the system, uh, it's going to almost instantly get turned into petroleum. Should we speed this up? Do have some slightly hot pipes on the way. I hope none of this turns into... Well, in fact, none of the pipes are over 400 degrees. Uh, but you can see these first blobs are grabbing all the temperature out of the pipe. And then we're getting a nice chilled system on the way. Ah, oh, yes, look at that. We are instantly turning that crude... Ooh, is that being instantly turned into... Maybe maybe we're going to push this up. 409. Yeah, let's go, let's go one more. 410. Let's see if this is going to keep this turning over. But the important thing is now that we've got this flow of uh, petroleum going down in the other direction from what the crude is being pumped up uh, this means that they are able to swap temperatures and hopefully we're going to be adding some cold enough liquids on top of this liquid pipe down here this liquid pump down here sorry that we can finally repair it and be ready to yeah look at this this is, this is great the crude oil uh, is indeed just it just keeps ticking up and over turning into extra petroleum we're, we seem to be settled out at 400 kilograms that's nice that's very nice well this, this is the whole system in order this is what we've been waiting for end of day does not make it very easy when it comes to repairing this pump but we'll, we'll wait do for now I wonder if I want to run a line of temperature shift plates up here. We seem to be overflowing these two tiles with crude oil. That's that's not great because we don't want it backing up uh, up this system here and into the the, uh, the the drip, if you will. Things would go very wrong at that point. But I think we're now adding cooler temperatures. Let's have a look as soon as this allows us. Uh, we're dropping 100 degree petroleum in, which should now be dropping. Yeah, the liquid pump is way below. Well, is the, it's dropped below now and it will continue to uh, to drop in temperature so let's uh, let's get that repaired so we can seal this area up I mean that doesn't really help with the tiles but we'll you know we'll figure it out we'll figure it out I'm wondering whether a line of ladder might also help 
Okay, I want to get this liquid pump done as fast as possible so that we could then seal this area up and get the uh, the oil wells pumping again. Uh, that would be nice. We definitely need to uh, depressurize these. This, this guy is super ready to go. He's well over 80%, so the, the outgassing will happen as soon as I turn this on, and that is not what I want. What I also don't want is to see what happens when this goes up above 1,200 uh, kilograms. You see this bottom one is 1,200. What happens when this one also gets to the point where it wants to split? Hopefully, it's going to go out and down rather than up. Up is definitely the direction I don't want to see this happening. Um, mm, yes. Also, we're running out of temperature now, so I might flick this switch back off and say okay good good test run ah oh, it went up that's exactly what we didn't want thankfully we're going to be able to uh to turn all this back off once the oil stops flowing i mean is are we now going to have too hot a temperature hmm. it should be self-regulated because obviously not no more can come out until more has been pumped in and it looks like actually the temperature is regulated relatively quickly 160 130 so we, we needed these back and forth but this last one here no temperature really gets swapped just as I was thinking about letting gases back in here, we've got and got a whole bunch of igneous rock gases in this side to uh, control the temperature for all of these materials and even the igneous rock that we are digging out. But uh, this, this ain't gonna work. We we need to do we need to do better than this. I need to actually, I think, rip down everything this side of the window tile and think about a better way of doing this. Or we could wait for the volcano to erupt and remelt everything. I mean, both both are options right now. I think the second one is what we're going to do first, but we're going to have to think long and hard about how to fix this in the long term. Okay, so the last thing to do is try and figure out how to save this situation down here. And I think the first thing we're going to do is come across to this conveyor loader, copy all its settings, and store them up in this little conveyor loader we've got up here, specifically to store those settings, because I want to clear everything away, but I want to have the ability to put them back afterwards. That copy-paste function is the only thing that's making that possible. I am looking for refined metal, which is down the bottom here, because in this rock, in this... Uh, by Axelin here, we have over 22 tons of iron. If we go back to Reverse Lin, we, um, it's only iron that we're waiting for for our steel production. So uh, I, I'm definitely going to be like, hey, could we actually move as much of this as possible and only iron? I believe the majority of it, yeah, it's just sat right here. Well, iron, 21 tons of it just sat right there. We need to uh, try and get that moving over to here over to reversing we also need to not be sending it back i think that was a maybe a problem that we had in the past uh, i also want to get the manufactured materials the steel needs to go over to pyaxlin that, that's that's what this is all in aid of we're going to try and put some doors down i'm going to try and copy this system here but instead of making it temperature based i don't know liquid based something like that i'm gonna i'm gonna think a little bit about it and try and figure out how i can even get sensors in the way but for now door here door there and uh, maybe some tiles reinforce this maybe we would want to put these across here um that's that's still a work in progress that particular bit okay we're cracking on in there now i'm not sure hey curie if if you could are you going yeah go to get your breath okay i'll let i'll let you do that i thought you might be going off to do another job in which case i was going to move her back over here and say hey could you actually break this but if she's just on the very verge of doing so i will let her go and get some breath anyway uh we need to break this somehow trying to extract this tile that is uh, very very hot 1300 degrees if i try and put it into this storage bin we are gonna have a bad time so instead, I'm going to try and just sweep everything out of there. Let's cancel everything that's not the uh, not the steel. Okay, let, let's see if someone's going to do that. I also want to put this airlock in place here if we can. I'm not sure whether the steel is going to be taken for that particular job. Uh, I'm not sure how even to make sure this happens uh, more quickly here than anywhere else. Hmm. Okay, maybe, uh, I don't know, even Maxwell isn't coming to grab these. Hopefully someone can just kind of yoink them out of the corner. Maybe that's something that a duplicate can do. I'm, I'm not sure, but we're, we're going to run with it for now. That That is possible. Hey, why did my steel... No, that shouldn't... Uh, what happened there? 2,400. Nothing here is that 
What? It's not melted. It's not added to the steel down below. Is it in the buried objects here? Can we get this done quicker? What's... Where did my steel go? What what happened? I'm gonna I'm gonna try that again. Oh look how far forwards we've moved. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that again. Okay, here we are again. 400 in use. I need to stop the alarm of them sending all that stuff across. Hopefully, now that there's nothing so superiorly hot, let's also get rid of this one if we can. Uh, hopefully now we're not going to be overwhelmed by temperature. I mean, there, there is a lot around, but I, I just don't think that was even. It may, Maybe I made a mistake and put the wrong tile down. I don't know exactly, but man, I, I feel like I got like... I got scammed. I got scammed. They took my steel away from me. Okay, let, let's try this again. Are we just going to build one and it's going to be fine? Nothing too major going on around us. I'm a little bit worried. Little bit worried. Where did it go? I, I, I don't understand. Okay, I'm going to plug a tile in place here. Do I have enough steel to have another go yet? Not quite yet. I, I'm really confused by this, really confused. Over on Reverse Lynn, people are waiting for materials. What needs to be... People are on it. People are already making the deliveries. Okay, that's fine. We've got more than enough iron, carbon, and lime to see us through quite a few rounds of this. Hundreds, in fact, so that's pretty cool. Waiting for it to get sent back. We've got no steel here right now, but we just need people waiting for the coolant. Awaiting the coolant. Maybe we should plug more in at some point. But after time, the steel is made, and then Plank goes on a nice little run up and across the base, makes his way over to the mystical transportation device. We still don't know how this actually works. It teleports things from one base to the other. It's only reversing and Pyaxlin that are conjoined like this. It drops off a whole bunch more steel over here. We've got 557. That's enough to try another door. Let, let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. And if this doesn't work, I mean, I'm just going to have a mystery on my hands. Okay, let's see what goes on here. Maybe lower the priorities. We don't need the alarms going whilst we've got this running. And our survey said, finally, it, why why did the last one not go? Okay, we will class that as a sacrifice to the gods to help us enable to help enable us get this up and running. Still, zero idea why that did that. If anybody knows, I mean, I've got it on video. <sighs> Okay, after much scratching of head, this is what we want. When we want some liquid to drop down, this will send a signal which will turn open this door. Then, after a little time, open this door. That will allow all the liquids in. Then we get a not signal coming through to change everything and turn everything off. Because, of course, this will then get flooded and that will go up. There's a lot of complicated stuff going on here. I highly recommend going back to my video where I first explained the system with reverse Lynn. But of course the hardest thing we're going to have to do now is try and build this system without building the automation gates that are going to shut the door. We don't want to do that yet. That That's that's the thing we want to avoid. So if I press Shift F2, uh, the black ones are outputs, the white ones are inputs. You can see the sensor outputs, and then we've got some inputs. Uh, I want to be able to get rid of this piece of wire here. I'm just going to cancel that build. Uh, we're just going to ignore it. And this bit of wire here, we're going to cancel that build. And we'll, we'll put them back together uh, after we've had duplicates walk in and out. How long until the, uh, the volcano erupts? Two cycles. Two cycles. We should be able to do this. You know, I wasn't really expecting this episode to be as long as this. Sorry, guys. It's uh, it's run a little over. Okay, here comes Curie. D just doing one bit of automation work. Good work. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> maybe we need to rip down these two tiles here to get into this spot. Let's, let's give it a go. And maybe people will come along and sweep all this stuff out if we do that. Looking at the way Curie's dropping equipment off, I'm not seeing anything come down to the bottom here, so I might be right there. Let's uh, let's put these priorities up, and then we can get into the side. Man, there's a fair bit of priority manipulation going on here. 
Okay, the last obsidian tile is going in place. We have ourselves 0.5 cycles on the system here. All the doors are open. I think everything is in place as well as it can be. Uh, all we need to do is um, wait, wait for some time. I've already done a save in case things go horrifically wrong. We can roll back to this particular point. Uh, I was, I actually had to have a couple of goes at this. Uh, wouldn't you know, there's a little bit of crude oil just down here, keeping the these two devices cool I say they're keeping cool enabling them to share their heat so they uh, remain relatively cool we'll have to figure out a proper cooling system for them at some point as well as this little storage bin over here because that's where I want to store my materials and cool that all down but I was turning that that bit of crude oil into sour gas I kept on filling this up with gas because people would grab the steel out of here and try and carry it round for being used I had to end up using the auto sweeper to put it into place to make sure that there was no contact with anything around uh, we, we we need to wait we need to wait that's not my strongest suit I've got a little bit of fear about this thermo sensor being on 410 but we're gonna leave it for now and see how this works out hopefully we won't flash up into too high a temperature but it could happen it very much could happen all right point three cycles 10 seconds running at time three we should be very much there by the time I finish speaking okay here goes a little bit of magma gonna drop down a little bit worried about the fact that this obsidian is so cool the thankfully 400 kilograms not that much should be fine what did we just melt there something igneous rock I bet it was a ladder I better put a ladder down or something uh, hopefully all of the materials around here are perfectly capable of withstanding the temperatures uh, I've just noticed that I've not actually set this up if below zero so the moment we get any gas or do we go a hundred not gas sorry uh liquids let's let's say a hundred so we can have a little bit of liquid in there we currently got a thousand kilograms of magma so it should quite simply overflow from that what maybe that was condensing um igneous rock there so that closes this closes then this opens again so that we're not swapping heat back and forth and we should have the perfectly sealed system beautiful okay the next fear that we've got is this over here the doors have opened this is up this is flowing we're going to turn this uh, set of um oil wells on so that we can have some backflow coming oh, wait we've got to throw that switch as well because at the moment we're going to be putting some pretty hot 220 degree petroleum through uh, i want to keep that in the low 200s ideally mid hundreds uh, immediately as we picked up the liquids this has actually been doing its job look at that the temperature is going down to 160 which means that the liquid pump should be picking up beautiful uh, we melted the filter here it, it full-on melted so uh, we're gonna have well it didn't full-on melt it um it died a horrible death due to overheating we can uh, we can swap that round now though and get that built but with that i am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen today we got all of our petroleum sorted look at this and uh, we've got crude oil going in we're going to have petroleum going out maybe i need a little bit of a thermo sensor there to uh, tell this pump when to turn on and off but uh, i think all in all we've got this system working um, remarkably well uh, i will see you guys next time where there are a whole list of jobs that i've got to do around different areas uh, i want to try and like start cooling this magma down on blagolia maybe we could set up uh, a better system oh dear we got some problems over here maybe we could set up a better system for the aluminium volcano I know the gold uh, co cobalt volcano is working well. I want to put some gold fish up here. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff I want to do on reverse lin. At some point, I need to make uh, different boxes for all the different materials here. We can automate all of that system. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up in the future. So uh, subscribe if you want to see that. And I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.